Hi, everybody. Welcome to Trial Alchemy. Today, I'm delighted to have as my guest, William Shapiro goes by Bill. And Bill is the owner of his own office, law offices of William D. Shapiro. And he has been very successful as a trial lawyer for plaintiffs. So I won't go through the entire CV, but to give you some highlights, Bill's a member of the American College of Trial Lawyers. He's a fellow. He is a fellow in the International Academy of Trial Lawyers and the International Society of Barristers. He's also, of course, a member of the American Board of Trial Advocates. He's been listed as in America's top 100 attorney. He's won all kinds of uh, Trial Lawyer of the Year awards. One that uh, I think is a neat one is he was a Trial Lawyer of the Year for Calabota, which is all the Abota chapters in California in 2015. And uh, he was celebrated in Hawaii at the annual convention. So thank you for joining me on Trial Alchemy. Well, thank you, Monty. It's always uh, it's a pleasure to do do your uh, podcast, and I'm honored. And now we're getting ready for the close and the final arguments. Um, you know, when you're when you're in your final argument in front of the jury, what what do you do to try to help them? figure out how they should come up with a value for non-economic damages and what your client either has suffered or will suffer throughout the rest of their life. Yeah. Well, what I do is number one, I use the verdict form, which we all, a lot of us do. And uh, I like to use the, the jury instruction 3905A, which outlines for the jury, the elements and the component parts of what they must award if they find liability. And I, and I I put that jury instruction up on a PowerPoint, but I select each area that is identified in the jury instruction, okay? Uh, and I put a, uh, each area I, I, I segregate and put a slide up and I talk about it. So if you're talking about disfigurement, I talk about just what disfigurement is and the impact that it's had on this person's life and uh, grief. What what it is, the emotional distress. What let's talk about those two words for a moment. What I mean, we've all had it, but let's really let's think about that and and put it in the eyes of this person. And I put each one of those things down. Now I've done it a bunch of different ways where. Uh, I, I've actually created a slide um, where I identify each of those areas of the jury instruction, and then I I put a life expectancy out. So if the life expectancy is uh, of a person's 36 years or 31 years or 20, whatever it is, uh, I, I talk about, well, what what is it worth to to have pain what is it worth to have the kind of pain that you can't see it but you know it's real the doctors have said it's real it's debilitating it hurts and, and all the evidence that you heard is, is the, and, and i put it in a how, how much well i mean to get novocaine the dentist charges you x number of dollars for to avoid pain in novic so in some way, what I'll do is I'll calculate an hourly basis of for the rest of this person's life for each of those slots mm. of grief, of pain, of disfigurement, and it, 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 when you when you put it down to an hourly basis, um, is it you think it's worth ten dollars an hour to be without pain, and uh, that's a per diem way to do it, and when you calculate each of those segments up with the total hours, with the total dollars, it usually can work out to be a, a substantial number. Another technique is using what people equate with money. Okay, okay, Otani just signed for 70, uh, what was he, I think it was $700 million. $700 million, yeah, with the Dodgers. Yeah, well, that, now that's obviously a, a one in a million guy, one in 20 million guy. Right. But when you think about a, a, a Monet or, or a painting that's worth $40 million, um, and the reason is because it's one of a kind. It's a one of a kind painting painted by a one of a kind person. 
And just like the plaintiff's wife was, she was a one of a kind. And though you can equate those things and, uh, and what people value as the value of money, um, I've argued that uh, um, a curator of a museum was asked by a, by a, by a, I mean, a fireman was asked by a curator of a museum to go in to get a, a, a painting out of a room that was worth, it was a Picasso that was worth, you know, $65 million. Go and, please go and get that painting. And the fireman goes in to get it. And as he's reaching to turn right to go to the, uh, to the, to the room where the painting is, he hears a little girl screaming. So what does the fireman do? Does he get the painting or does he help the little girl? Well, obviously he helps the little girl. That's the value of a life. Those kinds of analogies can be impactful on jurors. A lot of us have used the jetter liner, the ejection seat, to where to save a, a you know, a hundred million dollar aircraft. They say, pull, just pull the ejector seat, save yourself. Don't worry about the plane. Yep. You don't see the government saying, hey, ride that plane down. So those are analogies that we've used in death cases and in pain. You don't tell a client, hey,